Sunday school director. And he's also, him and Kaylin are our life group directors. And um, we have life groups that we offer during the week. Uh, we're getting ready to kickstart those and they'll happen in the evenings at a couple different people's houses throughout uh, the western end of the county, here at the church and in the, in the uh, central part of uh, Lincolnton. And so if you would like to be part of our life groups and go in and be part of those Bible studies, just talk to Brother Thomas or Miss Kaylin. Turn in your Bibles to the book of Luke, if you would, please. Zach, if y'all would turn this one down just a little bit here and mine up on up here. Turn this one up. Okay. All right. Yeah, great. Thank you. The book of Luke. The book of Luke. We've heard so much already. How many of you are so glad that your Savior is there for you? Amen? Amen. That's just a, a great thing. Also, real quickly, raise your hand if you took part in the Apple Festival yesterday with the church. Just raise your hand. Look at that. I had so many people come up to me, and it, and it, it just... It's so amazing as I was during my prayer time last night and this morning, um, you know, the Word of God calls me to equip the saints to do the work of the Lord. And it was such a blessing to see the saints doing the work of the Lord yesterday. Uh, many people came by and said, you know, preacher, this looks like a well-oiled machine. And I said, well, thank God I didn't have anything to do with it. Amen. It looked like a well-oiled machine. It was such a, a, a blessing to see so many of you out there working together to raise money for the different projects that we have going on here at the church and, and to just be getting involved. And if you want to see a vibrant church, if you want to see a lively church, you see a church that comes together for events like that to serve Jesus. Amen? And that will, that will show you a church that is full of life. If you find your way to the book of Luke, I was thinking about this this morning as I was going over it. And before we get started on that, how many of you are glad to be in God's house? Say amen. amen. How many of you are glad to be in God's house? Say amen. 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 Let's give God a hand clap of praise this morning. Sharing the gospel with people can be frustrating. Amen. It's good to see you, Miss Betty. I just noticed you. Miss Betty's had a rough time. See, I'll be praying for her. It's good to see you. I love you. Sharing the gospel with people can be frustrating, amen? It really can. As a pastor, it can be frustrating to, to share the gospel and to speak with people uh, who probably and sometimes just don't want to hear what you have to say, amen? And, and that's probably what scares most people more than anything. So it can be frustrating. It's not easy, but Jesus never said that it would be easy, amen? He really didn't. He didn't tell us it would be easy for us to share the gospel with other people, to go and, and knock on doors and tell people about Jesus, to go uh, to other countries and to tell people about Jesus. He, he never said that it would be easy. Actually, he says the opposite. Matthew 22, verse A, he states this, You will be hated by all men for my name's sake. Now that just doesn't give you a lot of hope, Amen. When you think about that, you'll be hated by all men for my name's sake. This doesn't seem to be a conducive place to start from. So when you know that you go out to spread the gospel, that you're going to be hated by all men for Christ's name's sake. We need to understand that preparing people for Jesus is the task that we have been given. But making them accept Jesus is not part of our job. We have been given the task to prepare people for the coming Messiah, for Jesus Christ's second coming. We have been called to tell others about Christ and what he did. But it is not our jobs to make people accept Jesus Christ as Savior. We don't have that ability nor that divine authority. This is why Jesus specifically lets us know that people aren't rejecting the messengers of the word. They're rejecting him because he is the word, right? They're not rejecting you. So many times we get <clears throat> so frustrated because we're sharing the gospel. We're so excited. I talked last week about how Paul would have us to be on fire, right? I said we get a little crazy. We might be like Jesus freaks. And people say, man, you're just crazy. I don't want to have nothing to do with you. Right? We don't need to, 
to get discouraged because people act like this because the Bible specifically says they will be people who turn down the gospel. If you've made your way to the book of Luke chapter 9, if you would turn with me to page or to, uh, to chapter 9 verses 51, and if you would please stand as we pay honor to the Word of God as it is our privilege to read the Word of God this morning. Luke chapter 9, verses 51 through 56. The Word of God says this, And it came to pass, when the time was come, that he should be received up. And I'm coming out of the King James Version, and I'll explain much of this. He steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem. And sent messengers before his face, and they went and entered into a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him. And they did not receive him, because his face was as though he would go to Jerusalem. And when his disciples, James and John, saw this, they said, Lord, will you that we command fire to come down from heaven and consume them even as Elijah did? But he turned and rebuked them and said, You know not what manner of spirit you are. For the Son of Man is not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. And they went to another village. We all get frustrated trying to spread the gospel. We can all get very aggravated, infuriated, trying to tell others about Jesus Christ. But the Word of God is specific. God has sent us to be messengers. We're not the message. Amen. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, this morning we come to you with humble hearts, thanking you for everything that went on yesterday. Lord God, that, that somehow, some way, that what we did yesterday would glorify you, that the money that we were able to raise would glorify you, that will be used to glorify your name, to glorify your kingdom, to, to make disciples, to go out into this community and tell everyone that we see about your son Jesus Christ and what he can do in their lives. Father, it can be frustrating as we can find ourselves very zealous, Lord God, for the gospel, which you would tell us to be, Paul tells us that we're to be zealous for the gospel. Lord God, but there's a way in which we are supposed to do these things. Lord God, and we not need to get frustrated. Father, because you came and you were the one and you tell us that they will deny us for your name's sake, that all men will. Father God, help us to move forward, even though we will be denied by many, but to keep pressing forward. That is what we've been called to do. In your name, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. You may be seated. First, you can write this down if you like to take notes. Jesus is the message, right? Jesus is the message. Now, looking at this, Jesus is the message in verse 51. I want you to follow with me real quickly. It says, And it came to pass when the time was come that he should be received up. Now, what time is this? Now, First Peter and Revelation tell us a little bit about this. Jesus knew the day of the cross was drawing near. He knew that day was drawing near. They were heading toward Jerusalem, and we see this in 51 as well. He knew the day of the cross was drawing near. Both of these verses state, since the foundation of time, Jesus has been ordained to go to the cross. From Genesis to Revelation, Jesus Christ is the message of the Bible. Amen? And so we see that in this verse in 51. It says, And it came to pass when the time was come that he should be received up, he steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem. Jesus knew the day of the cross was coming near. The disciples had went out on this tour. They were going through the different cities, the different regions, and they were telling everyone about Jesus. Jesus was coming through that region, and he was preaching the message of the kingdom of God. Now, it was the job, and we'll see that in just a moment, for the disciples to go forward and prepare 
a place for Christ. So Jesus knew the day of the cross was drawing near. He also, Jesus knew where it all would take place. Christ being omniscient and all-knowing, he also knew as he was being led by God where all this would need to take place. He focused his eyes on Jerusalem. Jesus was the message. He was the message. Jesus Christ knew what must take place that one day, 2,000 years from now, that I would be able to call upon his holy name and have everlasting life. Jesus Christ knew what must take place in order for that to happen, and he knew where it would all take place. He focused his eyes on Jerusalem. This is where the prophecies of Psalms 22 and Isaiah 53 would therefore be fulfilled. You see, Jesus didn't just bring the message, right? Jesus Christ didn't just bring the message of eternity, nor did he just give the message. Jesus Christ was the message. He didn't just have a, a good message to talk about. He didn't just bring a message of, of peace and hope. Jesus Christ is the message. And we need to remember that. When we look to the cross, we need to understand that Jesus Christ is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. Jesus Christ has always been, from Genesis to Revelation, the message of freedom, the message of hope, the message of reconciliation throughout the entire Scripture. Old Testament and New Testament combined, it is a beautiful picture of Jesus Christ going to Calvary for our lives and for our sake. Next, write this down. We are just the messengers, okay? We, we need to understand this. Jesus is the message. If Jesus is the message, which we understand, he is the word of God. He is the great and mighty logos. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Who is the word? Jesus Christ is the word. Jesus is the message. We, on the other hand, are just the messengers, right? Look with me at 52 and 53. <clears throat> the Word of God says this, and sent messengers before his face, and they went and entered into a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him. And they did not receive him because his face was as though it would go to Jerusalem. Now, here again, we are just the messengers. Our job is clear. There should be no conflict of what your position is in this matter. Are you the message? No. Amen? Look to your neighbor and say, I'm not the message. Look to your other neighbor and say, I'm not the message. You are just the messenger, right? Our jobs are clear. 52 states that the disciples were to prepare the people in the outlying towns to receive Christ. That was their jobs. They were to go ahead of Christ. Actually, in commentary, it says that uh, Luke was told to telescope himself out, which is in the original language, to telescope out, which means to, to go out into certain places and prepare a way for Christ to come. They would prepare a certain home. Maybe a family would take him in. Maybe they, they would have food for them at these certain places. Maybe they would find housing and shelter and lodging at these other places. But their jobs were clear. Their jobs were to go out into the other towns and prepare the way for the coming Messiah. He was working his way toward Jerusalem right? We know why it was going. It was that time. The Word of God says it had came to the time. He was heading to Jerusalem. We know what was going to happen in Jerusalem. Christ was going to the cross. So he was on his way there. He understood what was going to happen. He knew what was coming. 
He was working his way through the, through the region, through the towns, through the cities. And his disciples would go before him. And they would say, listen, can, can, you, can you house us? Christ is, is coming this way. We're making our way to Jerusalem. They would go across the outlying towns to receive Jesus. They were to instruct them on how to be ready for his coming. Now that sounds familiar. That sounds familiar to me as a Christian. The disciples were to instruct these people in these other towns on how to be ready to receive the coming Christ. It sounds a little bit like the Great Commission, amen? Sounds a little bit about the same thing that Christ would have us to do. Matthew 28, 19 tells us that we are to do the same thing as Christians. Tell others about Christ so they too can be prepared for his coming. Jesus is coming, amen? Jesus is coming, amen? <laughs> Jesus is coming. Their job was clear to go into the towns, to go into the cities and prepare the people, have them prepare themselves for Jesus as he makes his way to Jerusalem. Prepare for his coming. Now, 53 shows us that some will not receive his word. Some people will not receive his word. If you've ever tried to, to spread the gospel, to share the gospel, and if you're a Christian in here this morning, no matter if you're young or old, new or aged, your job is clear to share the gospel with everybody you see. Point blank period. There is no place in the kingdom of God for Christians or what you call pew sitters. There's no place in the kingdom. He has never saved one person to sit in a pew. Jesus Christ did not die so we could sit in pews. He died so we could go forth and tell others what we have in him. Amen. Amen. So we need to understand that. Our jobs are clear, but some will not receive. 53 states this. And they did not receive him because his face was as though he would go to Jerusalem. Now, they didn't receive him because he was pointed toward Jerusalem. They knew that they were, he was going to Jerusalem. So this town in Samaria, the Samaritans understood that Jesus was making his way toward Jerusalem. Now, the Samaritans hated the Jews. <clears throat> they were in constant conflict for hundreds of years. Many people today will not receive Jesus because of past conflicts, of past strifes, of past issues, or preconceived negativities of who Jesus is. We must remember that we are just the messengers. We have to remember that. You see, these Samaritans would not receive Christ because of where Christ was going. Christ was heading to Jerusalem. They hated the Jews. They said, I don't care what he's offering. I don't care what he's preaching. I don't care what he's teaching. We don't want none of it here because he likes those Jews. Just keep moving yourself down the road. Don't even stop by here. Right? We, under, we understand that. Many people today, for whatever reason, for whatever reason, because their mama served God her whole life and died of cancer, a, a horrible death, and so some son or daughter watches them while they're dying and says, if God was real, he wouldn't have let this happen. Some strife that took place in a church when you was a kid you saw some, somebody fussing with your parents or, or two people or something happened that was not nice, it was not good, and you step away from church forever and you say, well, I remember when this happened. Bunch of hypocrites. I'll never go back there. I'll never be part of that. I know how they are. People will allow themselves never to receive Christ because of past strife, past issues, and preconceived notions. 
about what church is and who Christ is. It'll keep them from receiving the gospel. We have to remember. <clears throat> we are just the messengers. Jesus Christ is the message. He's the one. He says that they will hate you for my name's sake, for nothing that you have done, but because you come preaching me. He says they will hate you. All men will. Doesn't give us a lot to go on. But oh God, how wonderful it is to have his salvation. Amen. Amen. Lastly, <clears throat> thank God Jesus is Lord and not us. Can I get an amen? amen. Thank God Jesus is Lord and not us. Walk with me here. Verses 54 says this, And when his disciples, James and John, saw this, they said, Lord, would you just let me command fire to come down from heaven and consume all these heathens? Amen. You just kind of got to love their attitude, right? You really do. You really do. <laughs> right, exactly. The wrong attitude, 54. They had the wrong attitude. James and John were known as the sons of thunder. Now, <clears throat> it doesn't specifically call for this verse. It says why they were called that. They were the son of Zebedee and Salome. And they were sons. This is not James of the book of James. This is James, the son of Zebedee, James the greater. And this is John the apostle. So they were considered the sons of thunder. And they were ready to lay waste to this place just like Elijah did in 2 Kings. Elijah, they would send Elijah the 50, <clears throat> 50 men, and they'd go up and say, man of God, he'd say, you call me that? And then he would call fire down and destroy him. Only time he did not call fire down on the 50 men was when the 50 came in repentance. They came to him at the bottom of the hill, and they said, oh, spare us, oh, man of God. And so they said, do you want us to do that? Do you want us to, to rain down fire? On these heathens, we went to this town and they said, hey, he likes those Jews. And so we're not going to receive him here. So these two great apostles, these two men of God go to Jesus and say, come on, come on. Let us call down fire and lay waste to the place. Sound like any of us? <clears throat> Amen. Amen. Yeah. Sound like any of us will get frustrated. Sharing the gospel with people can be frustrating. You can get aggravated. A maturity comes over time in sharing it, but I can remember early on, I just could not understand why people did not see what I saw. It's because their eyes are blinded. Now I know. It's nothing that they've done wrong. It's just something they ain't got yet. Right? My job is clear. I'm just the messenger. Jesus Christ is the message. Go before me. Tell them to prepare themselves for the coming Christ. My job is clear. I'm just the messenger. They were obviously passionate about their Lord and Savior, but they had taken their focus off the message, which was to prepare them for the coming Lord, not make them. Their message was clear. Prepare them for my coming, not make them accept me. You can't make anybody accept Jesus Christ. If you're lost in here this morning, it don't matter how much sweating and spitting I do, how, how char uh, charismatic I might be in my preaching style, I cannot make you accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. I'm just the messenger. He is the message. He's the one through his convicting power. My job is clear. I'm to tell you about Christ. I'm to preach Christ to you. I'm to teach Christ to you. I'm to tell everyone I see about the saving power of Jesus Christ. And then it's up to you whether or not you accept him or not. Luke 9, 5 in the Message Bible 
and I, I don't I don't read the Message Bible just as a translate it's a translation um, and it's a paraphrased translation. But I love this particular. Uh, way that they set this scripture up and I, I usually have four or five Bibles beside of me when I'm writing a sermon just to to get different uh, parts of different translations but I like how the message Bible sets this up in 9 5 it says if you're not welcomed talking about the sons of thunder going into Samaria and say listen Jesus is coming this way right Jesus is coming this way prepare yourself man it's glorious I can't wait Oh, it's going to be great in Samaria. It's going to be great down here. Christ, he'll, he'll be here in a couple days. Get ready, baby. I can just see the sons of thunder excited, excited, doing the work of God. They say, listen, <clears throat> if he's on his way to Jerusalem, y'all just keep passing by. We don't want him here. What? You don't want him here. What's wrong with you people? You don't want Christ in your town? Oh, Lord, let us just lay waste to the place. What they failed to realize was the Bible was specific, and the teachings up to this point have been specific as well. Verse 9-5, <clears throat> if you're not welcomed, leave town. Don't make a scene. Shrug your shoulders and move on. Wipe the dust off your feet. You've heard that. And move on. Consider them heathen. Move on. But I love the way this puts it. Love the way. I'd never heard it put. If you're not welcome there, leave town. Don't make a scene. Shrug your shoulders and move on. Why? Why would he say this? Because you're not the message. You're just the messenger. He's the message. He's the one. He's the one with divine power. In authority. They had the wrong attitude. They had a great zeal. They had great zeal. But just had the wrong attitude. Zeal without knowledge. And failure to rightly divide the word of truth. Can cause well-meaning men and women to greatly err in judgment. Right? Great zeal. Just lack of dividing the word of truth properly. Getting a little bit above themselves, ahead of themselves. Listen, early on, I would get so angry at people for not seeing what I saw. Man, I would get mad. I would go place, I'd say, well, there's just something wrong with those people. And see, Christians... So-called Christians are the same way. I, I get more angry at Christians than I do lost people. As my wife says, lost people are going to act lost. They can't help it. They're lost. It's the ones who say that they fall under the blood that I have a real problem with. That's another sermon for another day, amen? Many times Christians get so aggravated with lost people not accepting Christ or, or saved people, not walking close enough to Christ, that they do not realize they have taken their focus off the message and put it on their own emotional outrage. We can get caught up in our own spiritual slash emotional outrage. What is wrong with these people? Don't they see? Why won't they receive Christ? Man, let me just lay waste to the place, Lord. I've heard people say, Father, oh, I'm just going to pray, Father, you need to just go ahead and just burn this place to the ground. These people ain't never going to, all they're doing is damage. This house up the road, bunch of crackheads, meth heads up there, Lord, just blow it up, kill them all. They're just, they're, 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 they're hurting our community. God forbid somebody go knock on the door and share Jesus with them. Amen, Brother Mike. But they're too far gone. They're too far gone. They, they won't receive Christ. Let's just lay waste to the place. Amen. Jesus rebukes their attitudes. Verse 55. But he turned... To the sons of thunder, 
to the disciples, to the apostles, very people who walked with Christ on this earth. He turned to them and rebuked them and said, you know not what manner of spirit that you're operating in. Can I just kill them all? I mean, Lord, I'm ready for you to come back now. Go ahead, just lay waste to this place. Go ahead, bust through that eastern sky. If they ain't accepted you, let, let them die. I'm ready to go. This place is too much. Thank God he's Jesus and I'm not. Thank God he's long-suffering. Because I can only imagine that there were some Christians 20 years ago saying the same thing. Boy, lay waste to this place. Lord, just come back today. Come back today. And I would have spent eternity in hell. I would have spent eternity in hell if Jesus would have came back 20 years ago. Jesus rebukes their attitude. <clears throat> Jesus lets the disciples know their mission had been made clear. Prepare them. Prepare them. I'm the message. You're the messenger. Go and prepare the people for the coming Christ. Not destroy them. It was not their right. They didn't have the right to destroy them. Christ is divine. Christ is Lord. Christ is God. Your message is clear. Prepare the people for my coming. You don't have the right to destroy them. We don't have the right to push them to the side and not even go by there. We don't have a right to say, I'll knock on every door but that door. I don't have a right to say, that stuff took my kid's life. That stuff caused this person to hit my mama in a car and kill her. I hope they die. If you come under the blood this morning, you don't have that right. God says, I'm the messenger, the messenger. Go prepare the way for my coming. You don't have the right. Then he goes on in 56 to explain why. He says, I have not come to destroy men's lives. Praise God, I've come to save them. I've not come to destroy this country. I've not come to destroy these people. I've not come to destroy men's lives. Hallelujah. I've came to save them. Give him praise this morning. I've came to save them. I've came to save them. I thank God that Jesus Christ did not come back 20 years ago. I thank God that he didn't come back 15 years ago. I thank God that it was long-suffering and all those Christians with the wrong attitudes who was praying for him to come tonight, come tonight, did not get their way. I'm so glad that he's Jesus and they're not. He came to save men's lives, not to destroy them. Acts 8, 14, you don't have to turn there, <clears throat> but you can, I'll paraphrase it for us. In Acts 8, 14, here we see that after they had reached Jerusalem, remember what the, the process was. They were on their way to Jerusalem. Christ was with them. They were telescoping them their way out to tell others to receive Christ, to prepare them to receive Christ because he was making his way to Jerusalem because the time had come. The time had come. He knew the time had come for him to make his triumphant entry in, to be the Passover lamb, and to go to Calvary. Amen. He knew the time had come. He was making his way there. We see that they had reached, reached Jerusalem. And after the Lord's crucifixion, they had gotten word that something had happened in Samaria. You remember Samaria? The sons of thunder got there. 
They didn't want to receive Christ because of who he liked, because of where he was going, because he was going to visit those Jews up in Jerusalem. So the, the disciples had, had got word that something had happened in Samaria. So, so this time Peter and John, instead of James, Peter and John, go to see what had took place in Samaria. They leave Jerusalem and go back to Samaria. And I can only imagine what John was thinking when he saw that many, many of the Samaritans had accepted Christ. Wow. The sons of thunder, one half of the team, John, goes back. Goes back to Samaria. And he hears about it. And all of a sudden, his eyes, he sees it, that many had accepted Christ. I can only imagine how John felt. What would have happened if they would have destroyed the place? All those souls would have been Bound for hell. Jesus says, you're not the message. You're just the messengers. Prepare the people for my coming. Prepare the people for my coming. Thank God. Thank God. Jesus is Lord. And I'm not. Thank God Jesus is Lord and you're not. Many were saved in Samaria. Many will see when that day comes and we too find ourselves in heaven. They were ready to mark the book with them. They were ready to turn them over to death. They were ready to destroy the place, to lay waste to the place. When God says you don't have that right. You're just the messenger. I'm the message. Take me to them. If they don't accept you, shake off the dust and move on. You don't have the right to destroy them because I have came to save all men. Eyes closed and heads bowed, please. This morning, 